Hello and welcome to Wars Podcast. My name is CJ On, your host, and this is episode six. The Disciples Calling. This is me. This is my son. And that is a person. A man. If that person comes up to me or my son and says, Come follow me, I will make you fishers of men. To hell I'm going to follow him around for three years. No way! The disciples calling is a little skewed to begin with I gotta admit it is, a, it, is a, it is a little skewed because we usually hear it hear the passage during a revival or a prayer meeting or a big event at church now the reason I find it very very disturbing to a certain extent is because from the beginning when my son started to walk we have already started to, one of the first things that we have started to instill in him is not to follow strangers. Whatever they say, whatever, whatever they give you, do not follow strangers around. Because that's what a good parent with a sensible heart would do. The thing is, the story when we just look at the calling of these disciples, it seems like it's going against these basic logical you know everyday knowledge Jesus comes up to Peter and John and their brothers and he goes hey Peter I'll make you fishers of men come follow me and Peter on the spot leaves everything behind and follows Jesus even John too he leaves everything on the spot and follows Jesus Matthew on the tax collectors table leaves everything there and follows Jesus now the problem is if somebody comes up to you or your son or your daughters and says come follow me I'll make you fishers of men and they follow are you comfortable with that no the answer is no that guy whoever he is or even him or him or him or him or even that guy or even this guy if he comes and tells us come follow me I'll make you fishers of men out of the blue to hell I'm going to be following him around for three years risking my life no way so when you look at the Bible the calling of the disciples is mentioned in a short concise manner however in John it's a little different because in the book of John it shows you the first moment when Peter met Jesus. Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. John the Baptist looked up and said, Look, there goes the Son of God, the Lamb of God. And he pointed at Jesus. Now, intrigued by that, decided to follow Jesus. And he followed him to where he was staying and went and talked with him for a while now after talking to Jesus the first thing Andrew did was he went to see his brother Peter he didn't do anything the Bible specifically says right away Andrew went to see Peter now this too is very significant because in the previous episode, one of the previous episodes when I was mentioning the disciples, Peter and his brother, John and his brother, were not poor. Instead, we could see that these guys were pretty, they are doing pretty well. They are doing very well financially. They had their own boat, they had their, uh, they had people working for them on the boat. 
So they were an owner of a small business or small to medium sized business at that time. So now, what that allows for these two families to do is very significant. Whenever you see a revolution being started, it's usually the students, the learned. It's not the everyday person who is toiling in the fields that is, who are able to muster the strength or the time to start a revolution. It's almost always university students or high school students. In some remote cases, high school students because they're some of the more educated people in a country or a place. So now, because of this, when Andrew, like I said in a previous video, following John the Baptist around is like attending university. Now, when he found out that Jesus was claiming to be the Messiah, he went and told Peter first. And Peter, on the spot, came to Jesus to talk with him. This is before Jesus asked Peter if he could use his boat to preach a little offshore and afterwards calling Peter to be fishers of men. It was before this, Peter met Jesus and then they talked. They talked about, they probably talked about everything that Peter was concerned about the society at that time. So in doing so, Peter was able to forge a relationship with Jesus before the calling came through. Now think about it. It's not just somebody claiming to have powers coming to you and saying, come, I will make you fishers of men. And the person blindly following that person. The two people had a relationship. It is so important to acknowledge this fact because if we don't, how are we able to teach our children how to react once they feel like they have a calling? One day my son will leave my fold and go out into the world and he will meet people, he will meet situations where God will speak to him. And how do we tell them and how to respond to those callings? Because if we just say, well, Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. Peter, John, and their brothers follow him immediately. If that's how we teach our children to follow a calling, that's how they will do it. So it changes the whole story of the 12 disciples calling because it's not like Jesus came up to them. It showed them a miracle. Bam! There's your miracle, come follow me. No, it was done in a more personal, logical, and acceptable way. Jesus came to Peter, had a relationship with Peter, and his friends and then he went and showed him the miracle that would convince them for the final time it was not like boom miracle first see I have wowed you you're in awe come follow me I am divine no it wasn't done that way he convinced Peter telling him his thoughts, his philosophy on what is going wrong in this world and in this time. It is very interesting to see that Jesus, when choosing his disciples, chose people who are sort of well off. I'm not saying that Jesus only chooses people who are well off, but in this case, when he chose the disciples, he chose them so when they left their family, the families were able to survive without them. Jesus chose people who would not be missed terribly financially. Now think about it. John and his brother, Peter and his brother Andrew, they are four grown men who have been plucked away from their families and their family has to survive without them in this time and age which is almost impossible if you are not well off. 
he did not destroy a family in for his work to progress he was considerate of how things were now we have to make sure and when we are set upon our calling we have to take all these things into consideration because Jesus also took this into consideration he did not just mindlessly go and gather people on the streets and say come follow me I'll make you fishers of men no he had an exact purpose exact idea of who to pick and who to call and when to call so why would Andrew go find Peter first yes everybody at that time was waiting for a Messiah to come and save them from the grass of the Romans but these were sons of an owner of a fishing boat or even a fleet of fishing boats they have the time they're not dead tired after the day is over they're not like the workmen that they're hiring they're the owner the sons of an owner so after the work is done you could just imagine them going to a pub having a drink and with the local people who are able to afford such luxury to gather around in the evening and talk talking about these type of issues about the Roman Empire the occupation and about the Messiah so because of this preset of Peter already deeply wanting a Messiah to arrive Andrew knew that the first person he should tell was his brother because his brother was looking forward to it with an open heart and open mind he was actively searching and he knew that as soon as he talked to Peter he would come and see Jesus and make his own decision so Peter was already ready to hear about Jesus the brothers were already ready to hear about Jesus about his arrival so when Jesus talked to them the relationship would have blossomed and when he came to that shore to preach I bet it was not the first time that Peter heard Jesus preaching so when Jesus told Peter to go out and cast the net Peter was not following some random person's orders he was following it because there was already a little bit of trust seated and growing inside of Peter he's thinking this is a person I could sort of trust and when that miracle happened here we go BAM he was convinced and when Jesus called him his undecided mind said yes and that's what Jesus was doing he wasn't just going out there and going superhuman and saying I am divine no he was having a personal relationship so when the time was right when he said come follow me I will make you fishers of men they got up without doubt and followed Jesus and the rest was history and I hope that throughout our Bible study vlogs that we could find a personal relationship deepen our personal relationship with God and for every step we take be a step closer to his will to knowing him better thank you so that God through